Hi, and welcome to Knitting Blooms. I'm, my name is Tina, and this is episode 8. This, it is Sunday, June 19th, and Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. If you are a first-time viewer, thank you for stopping by, and if you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. And this week has been somewhat icky. <laughs> I've kind of been sick since Wednesday, so it actually got me a lot of knitting time because when I wasn't sleeping, I was sitting on the couch knitting. So I got a lot of stuff done this week. Um, so let's just jump right into it. I'm going to try and get through this kind of quick because I'm still not feeling all that great today and my plan is once I'm done recording to go back to vegging on the couch and knitting. So we'll start with the finished objects this week. Um, I finished my MLA socks. Oh and by the way I changed the lighting a little bit so let me know how this works out. Um, I'm hoping that everything goes okay and you can still see the projects good. If you like the lighting from previous episodes please let me know that the other lighting was a little bit better. So I finished the MLA socks. Um, as I said before I usually when I'm knitting them I knit until the pattern reaches about the toe. So if I have them off the blocker and the pattern reached the toe and then I did my ribbing. So that's about how long I like my socks. And I finished one, I think it was on Wednesday. I didn't have that much more to go um, on that. And then I just picked up the other one and just plugged away on it. And because I was way down on the second one, I probably only had, I was probably about right here. So I had quite a bit to go. And then on the other one, I probably only had about another inch or so from last week. So those socks are done. And I do want to mention that I don't block my socks. I have them on blockers now because I took the pictures and I wanted to be able to show them to you. But I don't when I wash them, I just hang them to dry or I lay them flat to dry. I don't block them because I figure they're going to be stretched out on my foot anyway when I wear them. They're not, they don't really need to be blocked because when I make my socks, I make them um, so that they're snug on my foot. So when I, I just soak them and then I just hang them, hang them up to dry or I lay them flat so but I have the blockers because I like to take the pictures with the blockers and it's a lot easier to see the pattern when they are stretched out a tiny bit so that is the first finished object of the day the second one you may have noticed was my Demeter Charlotte last Sunday I after the podcast while it was compiling and whatnot I just sat down and I said I need to get some of this beading done. I just had the other half, I had a little bit on the one side to do of the border and then the whole other side of the border to do. Um, and I just sat down and I had kind of said in my mind, okay, I'm going to do this many more beads and then I'll stop. Well, um, it ended up that I got through those number of beads quicker than I thought I would. So I'm like, oh, well, I'll do another, you know, 10 or 15 or whatever beads and then again I got through that quicker and I'm like well I only have so many more beads left to go I think it was another you know 30 or something so I'm like or 30 or 40 and I said you know what I'm just gonna crank it out so that I did I just cranked it out Sunday afternoon and got it done and was able to put it on the blocker Sunday Sunday night so it is all done and I really like it a lot. It turned out really nice. I love the beading on it. Um, I love the way that my hand spun came out. I love everything about this project. I mean, I guess when I first started the hand spun, when I first want, was trying to determine what project I wanted to do with the hand spun, I was thinking I wanted to do something that had lace and pattern, kind of like the Summer Mystery Chalette, 
but I'm glad that I stuck with a simple stockinette body with the border because this really does show off the the yarn and that's really kind of what I want because I mean I hand spun this this is my very first hand spun project and it really does show off the yarn exactly like I want so my guess is that I will probably do with with a lot of um, my hand spun I will probably do a lot of simple stockinette shawls like this um, for my hand spun because it really does show off the hand spun quite well and the beaded border that bead those beads just add the little extra you know oomph to the project to really make it pop so I am glad that I decided to go with this particular pattern for my um, hand spun because it really did turn out beautifully the other project that I did work on and I think I have it here I, did, I usually open up my bags so I can see because I have an order of how I want to show you the projects but I worked on the sock yarn blanket this week last week after haven't worked having not worked on it for a number of weeks I said you know what I just need to pull it out like like I said last week I needed to find a way to work it in and what I did was I pulled out the bin and I stuck it by my um, place by where I usually sit to watch TV in the in the evening and I did work on it I did I think two or three squares on Sunday after I finished the Demeter Charlotte and then I kind of got in my mind, okay, if I can do one square a day, I mean, and it takes maybe 35 to 45 minutes to do a square. I, I guess when I was doing them, um, after a while, they were getting quicker and quicker. I don't know if, if it's just those first few squares when I sit down to it after a while that take me a little longer to kind of get back into the rhythm. But um, I did end up doing, I believe, nine squares. And I'll just quickly run by them for you here. I did this one, and this one you may recognize. This is the, some leftover from um, the, the Mystery Medallion Shawl. This is the hand dye that I did in the tonal colors. And then this was some leftover. I held this. This was um, leftover from my Icarus Shawl. And this was what was this? Gossamer, I think. And I held the yarn double because it was it was a lace and it was um, a little bit thin for um, the blanket so I just held two together and that turned out really nice this one was just a random ball from my my huge bin of sock yarn he, this is another one that I did another random ball this is another random ball and I I want to say that this is socks that rock but I'm not really sure I've never used the yarn socks that rock for socks yet I have I don't know, four or five skeins that I've bought that I want to eventually make socks out of. Um, but I haven't, I have so much sock yarn that it's hard to sometimes get to everything that you want. This is some of the leftover my hand spun. I did not hold this double, I held it single and it, it came out just fine. This is another random ball, um, another random ball, and another random ball. So. I did all of those this week and um, I'm quite happy with the fact that I got that much of it done. I may be drinking a little bit more today because my throat's kind of dry from being sick and coughing so please forgive me. So I'm glad that I, I got that much of this done this week. And like I said, my goal now is to try and do at least, so let's say if I do a square a day, so I want to do at least seven squares in a week. So by next Sunday, next time I podcast, I'd like to have seven more done. And I really want to weave in the ends as I'm going, but I was just got on a roll, and this week being sick, I just, you know, when you're sick, you don't really feel like doing things that you don't feel like doing. So I did weave in my ends. But typically what I do, I usually do weave, in the, weave them in um, as I go. And I already have um, three more 
these are the next three squares that I'm planning on doing. Those I put them in my little project bag. I kind of just went through and decided what um, I looked at what squares were there and I kind of picked something. So those are the next three that I have and maybe this afternoon I'll get a chance to do another square. I'm Right now I'm actually two squares ahead um, for this week. So if I could just do a square a day or seven squares a week, that blanket will come along qu quite quickly. The next project is, again, I didn't open my bag, so I didn't have them out, is the Lady Eleanor. And I can kind of show you this a little bit because I'm kind of in the middle of a row. I did do one full row across um, the top here. Oh, and here comes Sammy. Let's see if she's going to sit on my lap. Come on. Um, it's like when the knitting comes out, she comes over. Now, we're not going to play with that. I've got my robing over here because I want to show you that later. And she's trying to get into that. Come on. You going to sit still? You want to say hello to everybody? Here's Sammy. So lay down right there, sweet girl. Okay. Oh, okay, I just want to make sure I don't drop my stitches. Anyway, so I did do one full row yesterday. Yesterday I recorded a short demonstration of um, how I do the, the knit backwards. And I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm either going to insert it here or I'm going to insert it at the end of the video. So if you see it now, then it's here. I just I couldn't decide if I was if I wanted to splice up the video or not or put it at the end. So I'll decide when I'm editing and if it's not if it's not here now then you'll it'll be at the end of the video. So anyway, so I did make some progress on this this week. Not that much progress and like the sock yarn blanket, I would like to make at least one row progress of this every single week. Excuse me. Um, this is a project that has been on my needles for quite some time, and I would like to finish it up. But it's not, it's not, it doesn't call to me. It's not one of those projects. Sit down still. It's not one of those projects that calls to me that makes me want to just do it. Um... But if I get one row done a week or two, I'll be happy. It'll be moving along, and it'll eventually be done. And hopefully it'll be done by winter, because it's a heavier shawl, so um, it's something that I'd probably want to wear in the wintertime. The next project is the Baby Surprise Jacket. And I had a little bit of backwards progress on this this week I was knitting along and I was watching looking the pa looking at the pattern and reading the instructions and if you've ever knit this project the the instructions of all are all of one page and it this I make a photocopy of my book just so that I don't get my book all messed up and this is kind of crinkly because I've just had it shoved in my bag but it's not a complicated pattern, but it is. There's a few little things that you have to do with it. Well, I was knitting along, and I was counting my decreases up. And I was looking at it, and thank goodness I can read my knitting quite well. And I was counting them up, and I'm like, oh, at about right here, yeah, I guess about right there, I noticed at the beginning of my row that I had forgotten to pass the slip stitch over. And trying to, um, I just want to move that so she's going to lay on my project bags, but I don't want her to need in my project. So, um, so trying to kind of rip back and fix it, that wasn't going to happen. So I ended up, I think I had to rip out like eight rows and with this project, it's not that much, but I did. I ripped them out, and I'm back further along, and I'm increasing now 
Oh, I thought there was another mistake. It's where I had to join the yarn and I didn't weave in the ends yet. So I'm moving right along. I'm back to doing the increases. And um, I did make some additional progress on this project this week. Um, if I really focus on this project, I could probably get it done um, in the next day or so. We'll see how it goes. Um, there's so many other projects that I'm working on that I want to get done that if it gets done, it gets done, whatever. So, again, I like this yarn. This, this yarn was the yarn that I used for my very first Wicked that I ended up ripping out because I didn't like the how the colorway was striping up. Um, I think that this would be a good yarn. Like, this is a, this is a garter stitch, and it's really turning out cute. And I think it would definitely be a cute garter stitch thing, but the stockinette in the round, it just wasn't working for me. So this was a much better choice for this particular yarn. So that is moving right along. The next project is the Featherweight Cardigan. And this is, I'm hoping I'm at the end of a row, we'll see. This is another Knitting for Hire. And I have, excuse me for a moment. I have broken off for the sleeves. And I have done this a number of ways where I, sometimes you'll see I have um, just a knitting cable in my held stitches. Sometimes I use my crochet cotton. Sometimes the crochet cotton trying to pick up the stitches again is a little bit difficult. Now, I like the way that they did this part because there is some increases under the arm. And I think that helps because usually when there's no increases, these first few stitches on either side of the armhole, um, they get pulled tight and to try and pick them up again, it is difficult. So I thought this time I would just try with the, with the cable in there. And then when I'm ready to start knitting, all I have to do is stick my needles in, pick up those few stitches in the center and go. So we'll see. It was kind of a pain when I was working those first few rows after, um, dropping the sleeve stitches because the little knobbies were kind of getting in the way but now that I'm a, an, an inch or so down it seems to be fine it's not a problem um, it's coming right along this is a project that I spent a lot of time working on this week because I was sick in bed and stockinette knitting with, um, with just a couple of increases was about after doing the socks, the socks were easy because the socks were um, a simple pattern. And But this was also very mindless. I didn't have to think too much. So it's coming right along, and I hope to finish it in the next two weeks or so, hopefully by the, en the, the end of June. So not too shabby, I would say, but it's, it has a lot to do with you know being homesick I was homesick for two days and um, I did go back to work on Friday but because uh, I just had so much to do at work that I could not be off another day and I did go back to work on Friday but yesterday I was back on the couch resting again um, the next project which is not really a project yet is the Bacardi knit along and Friday when I was uh, I guess it was Friday. I I had decided that once I broke off for the broke the sleeves off on um, the featherweight cardigan, I would pull out the yarn for my Bacardi. And I almost did yesterday. I had yesterday was when I finally got to that point where I was um, had increased enough stitches. And I was ready to divide for the sleeves. 
And then I thought about it and I thought, you know what? I know that once I start that Bacardi, it's going to be one of those projects that I just want to go for. And I just want to do. So I think that I'm going to wait until I finish the featherweight. And I'm hoping again, like I said, to finish it by the end of June. But I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and start the knit along as of July 1st. So if you want to do the Bacardi knit along with us, we're gonna, I'm going to start it as of July 1st and I'm going to run it through the end of September. So that'll be three months that you can work, that I'll be running the knit, the, the knit along. And I am planning on having some sort of prizes at the end of the knit along. So even if you don't finish your Bacardi in that time, if you participate in the thread and show your progress, then you'll be entered in the drawing for the Bacardi Knit Along. So, starting July 1st, I will, at the very least, start my swatch by then. And we'll run the, the, the Knit Along through the end of September. And then we'll do a prize drawing for the Knit Along in October. Like the first episode in October or so. So... That is um, the Bacardi Knit Along. And I did start a new project this week. Like I said last week, I wasn't, there were was certain projects that I wanted to get completed before I started um, the Bacardi. And Emma Lake's socks were not one of them because I knew that I would start another pair of socks as soon as those socks were done which I did. I started these. And this is a yarn. And I'm not sure how well you're going to see it because I just, I feel like I'm in a shadow today. So again, I'm hoping the lighting's good enough for today. Again, if you, if you prefer the previous episode's lighting, please let me know and I'll go back to that other lighting. Um, this yarn I purchased when I was, um, in Canada with a friend of mine at a yarn shop. When I go to yarn shops, when I go to other yarn shops if I'm out and about, and I go in if I'm looking for something specific and I can't find it or nothing really strikes my fancy that I like have to have, I typically always buy a, a skein of sock yarn. You just can't go wrong with sock yarn. And I feel like if I go into a store and the, the staff are friendly and they're helpful, even if I don't find what I'm looking for, I feel like I want to I wanna support the, the store because, you know, they were nice and what have you. So at the very least, I always buy a ball of sock yarn. I think that's why I ended up with over 70 pairs of socks worth of sock yarn that still need to be knitted. Anyway. This, so this yarn I think I bought, it was probably one of the first pairs, of, first balls of sock yarn that I bought and um, my friend, she made a pair of socks with something very similar to this. It's not, I don't know if it's this exact colorway, but it's the same yarn. And it was, I believe it was an indie dyer in Canada. And I checked the website, um, there's a website on the, the label of the yarn, but the website is not available anymore, so I'm guessing that that person is no longer dyeing yarn, or maybe they changed their name. But this is a heavier weight, fing a heavier fingering weight yarn, so um, these socks are going to come up pretty quickly. So I did start both socks, like I typically do. This is the toe, and I started the second sock, and I'm working up a pattern as well. And because it's a heavier, heavy fingering weight yarn. They are going quickly. I just started these yesterday. Um, I was supposed to be going to a graduation party for my husband's cousin's daughter, but I was just feeling so crappy yesterday. I ended up staying home, and he went by himself. So, But I started this yesterday morning in hopes to have an easy traveling knitting project. Um, and so I started it up, and... I liked how, this is the bottom of the foot, and I liked how the yarn was, um, 
was coming together the the colorway it's not it doesn't seem to be pooling it seems to be very variegated and I really liked it but because it's a heavier yarn and there's really no pattern to it I just did not want to do a plain stockinette and uh, my friend Naomi she was do working on a pair of socks with um, it was a self striping yarn but she had added a mock a mock cable rib to the pattern that just made the 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 patterns pop it was just added the slightest bit of texture to the yarn that was really kind of cool so i did a version of that here and and i say a version because i'm not doing the rib because the the pattern is a knit three purl one kind of thing and then the mock cable. And first of all, I didn't feel like doing the purls. And secondly, I didn't want all of my cape, my mock cables to go straight up and be in alignment. As you can see here, I have kind of, you know, kitty cornered them as I go up. And it just kind of adds a little extra spice to it. So I didn't do the pearls. I did all knits. And then I just added the, the cable in there. And it seems to be patterning it up quite nicely. And giving it just a little bit of texture. And these socks are going to knit up pretty quickly. I can probably get to the foot on this sock. I mean, I was watching um, a couple podcasts this morning, and I think I knit from here to here just this morning, watching, you know, a 20-minute podcast or something like that. And that was, at the same time, having breakfast and drinking my coffee. So I was picking up and putting it down. So these socks are going to be pretty quick to knit. I would not be surprised if I have a decent amount of knitting time this week, and I don't spend a huge amount of time on some of the other projects. I would not be surprised if I'm at the heel of both of these socks next week. So, um, but yeah, it's too bad that this company is the um, the ball band. It says painted yarns, and the website was paintedyarns.ca. And it's too bad that I can't get more of this because even though. Um, it's a heavier fingering weight, and I don't typically make a lot of socks in this weight. I do like the, the um, variation in the yarn that has been done. So, And this is 100% merino, and um, it is 130 grams and 60 meters. So if you know this company, um, Painted Yarns, and you know how to get in touch with them, please let me know because I'd love to get more of this yarn. It's it's really working out nicely and I, I really like the variation in this in this yarn. So that is my new whip this week. Spinning. I have been spinning. Um, not so much on the spindle. I'll show you that first. Being sick, I just have wanted to sit back and relax and not really do a lot of anything. But I, this week, I don't think I did any spinning. I might have done, or any spinning on my spindle. I might have done a tiny bit um, Sunday or Monday, but not too much more after that this week. So this has kind of been on the back burner this week. But I did sit down to Viola. A couple times this week and this I've gotten this much done it, it's hard to really tell how much that is and you can't really see what I've done on that because it's all covered up this is a bit of the roving that I have pre-drafted and um, is ready for me to spin and this is the this is the fiber that I hand dyed a couple weeks ago and I weighed it earlier this week and I must have changed um, changed the setting on my scale because I weighed it and I thought I had less than an ounce to go and I'm thinking man that's not that much on that bobbin and I thought I had four ounces and 
it just didn't seem like it was going all that far. But in fact, I don't have, I haven't even knit up half of it yet. I think I have 63 grams left. And I think I had about 115 grams or so. So I'm about halfway. But that's what I've been working on. I have been using Viola with the Wooly Winder, so my skein, my uh, bobbin is quite even, which I really like. I don't, I can just go and go and go and go and not have to worry about moving the the yarn down. And again, this is a rather thin single. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but it is it is quite thin. I haven't measured it, but my guess is I still will get a light fingering when I Navajo ply this. So that is that. Um, and that's spinning. I do have another knit along that I'm planning on joining come July 1st. The proverbial knitter is doing a knit along and she had decided that they were going to do a shawl and then she allowed her viewers to pick which pattern that they were going to do. And she ran the um, poll for quite a while. And Traveling Woman was the shawl that was, was chosen. And I'm going to do this shawl in this yarn right here. This is Knit Picks Gloss. And it is a merino wool and silk blend. I have two skeins of it. And I'm going to do, I believe it's the... It's the fingering weight version, and I can't remember if it's the medium or the small. Whatever, which, whichever size uses approximately 440 yards or a little less than that. But I'm thinking about knitting this up in this colorway. Um, I was going to make a pair of socks with this. Um, it's, a, it's, an, it's a good colorway for a men's socks with a, with a small stitch pattern. But... First of all, if I'm going to make socks for somebody, I'm going to make them with superwash because the likelihood of a non-knitter hand washing a pair of socks is not likely. And and merino wool and silk, yeah. So I think that this is a good a good um, alternative for it. And excuse me, now she's Sammy is playing with the the drawstrings on my all of my bags. So, that's what, this is what I'm going to use for it. It is a, like a steel gray color. Um, I'm not sure if they have a colorway on here. Dauphin is the colorway. And I don't even know if Knit Pick still has gloss or not. But that's what I'm planning on using. And her knit, knit along starts in July, July 1st. And you know, I'm not really sure when it runs through. It might be July and August, I think, that the, the knit along is running through. So if you haven't, um, if, you, if you're planning on doing the Traveling Woman Shaw and you want to do it with a bunch of people, you know, go over to the Proverbial Knitter. Um, her, she has a, a group on Ravelry that she's hosting the, um, the knit along and check it out and join us. That will be fun. Also, this week, I finally got the whole music thing worked out, so you should have heard a new um, music segment at the beginning of the podcast. Let me know what you think about it. Um, it's kind of interesting just to try new things and, and everything, so I have that. And if you follow along on the group page, you may, or uh, the group on Ravelry, you may have noticed that I posted earlier this week to stay tuned to this episode because there was going to be more prizes to come. And I'm going to tell you about that right now. I don't know what prizes I'm going to have yet. Um, I have had um, a couple of people contact me about making some donations. So if you are a vendor and have a indie company or whomever, um, if you sell products and you want to get the word out about your product, contact me and um, to make a donation for the drawing, 
for this drawing or a future drawing and um, that would be wonderful but this time <clears throat> excuse me I'm not sure what prizes I will have I'm hoping to be able to dye up some more yarn um, in the near future so um, hand dyed yarn might be involved um, I do plan on doing a special edition episode for a project bag the cute little project bags that I that I've made <clears throat> this project bag it's so so simple but I've had a couple people ask me how I make them if I have a pattern so I'm gonna do um, a, a special episode and I'm gonna go through the process of how I do my project bag so there's probably going to be a project bag that will be a, one of the prizes. Um, I might make some stitch markers or maybe we'll have some donated. I'm not really sure what the prizes are going to be, but the drawing will be held on episode 10. This is episode 8, so in, in two weeks the drawing will be held. I think it's July 3rd. How do you enter the drawing? Well, I want to know how many yards of yarn you have knit this year and with the stash down or the stash that well the stash down and the stash dash I earlier this couple weeks ago I start, set up an account on knitmeter.com and have kind of been keeping track of what how many yards I've knit and I went back and I entered all of the projects for this year that I had finished to date. And I entered the yardage. And it has been quite interesting to see how many yards I've actually knit up this year. And I tried to check it this morning. And I, but I guess knit meter must have been down or something. But, and I don't enter my projects until I'm done. So even though I have a number of projects on the needles, I don't enter I didn't enter the project as being knit until it was done because I think there's a way that you can select a pro make make a new project and then enter as you go so like maybe if you work through a ball of yarn and you add it to your project and then you work through another ball you add it to your project I didn't want to deal with all of that so I just add the yardage when I'm done so when I'm done I figure out approximately how much yardage I used based on the ball band and then enter that into the knit meter. <clears throat> so you can either use the knit meter to keep track of your yardage or you can guesstimate, you can go through and add up from your Ravelry page. It's all up to you. You can guess, you can make up a number. I don't really care actually. I would like to I would like to have a somewhat accurate number just because I it'd be interesting to see how much everybody else is knitting. Everyone tells me I knit a ton. So I think I have around 11,000 yards this year. So I guess if everybody is way lower than me, then I guess I really do knit a ton or fast or something. I'm not sure. So tell me your yardage. I'm going to set up a thread on the Ravelry group and I just want to know how many yards you have knit year to date. You can I only want one entry and it doesn't really matter because what I'm going to do, how I'm going to draw the prizes is, just a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a list of everybody's um, yardage and my yardage which is 11,000 or unless somebody has a higher yardage. And I'm going to do one to that highest number of yardage. And then I'm going to do the random number. And whoever comes closest to the random number is going to win the prize. And um, there's probably going to be at least three or four prizes. I also have some books that I want to um, give away. So you have multiple chances to win. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a random number. And the person with the closest yardage is going to be the winner. So, tell me your, your tell me your yardage in the thread on Ravelry. Again, I'm going to set up that thread, and you can just go there and tell me your yardage. 
tell me if you're guessing if this is an accurate number, if this is your what you wish you had knit so far this year. So, um, yeah. And then the drawing will be in two weeks. The last thing I just want to mention is one of the podcasts that I've been watching this week. And that is the Exchange Student in Fiberland. Mary Gale, she has been... I don't know what episode she's on, but she had gone on a sabbatical for a little while, and she had uh, she had just had a new episode this week. And what I like about this particular podcast is she is a fairly new knitter. I think, I want to say she started knitting last year um, in the fall, maybe September or October. She's a school teacher, and I believe that um, she got laid off or something like that, and so she needed something to fill her time until she got a job. So she decided um, her son wanted a Harry Potter scarf or something like that for, for Halloween, and she decided instead of trying to buy it, she was going to make it. And she learned how to knit. So a lot of her podcasts... Um, are from the perspective of a new knitter and she asks questions of people you know if she's not quite sure of something and so it's it's it it is fun to to watch her show even if even from my perspective which I'm a more advanced knitter I guess I wouldn't say I'm advanced I would say I'm an, an intermediate to advanced I'm I don't know everything but if there's something that I don't know I usually go out and find out about it so, but check her out. She's, she's really cute and she, she does provide information. Some of, some of her projects are different than thing, th things that I would um, particularly choose on my own. But it's kind of fun because I get to see what other people are working on. And um, so, yeah, so check out her podcast. And I think that's it for today shorter episode than normal but it's kind of good because I need to go and sit, sit on the couch. I've been watching while well, I've been spending my hours on the couch these last few days I've been watching um, the series Dollhouse and um, there's only two short se seasons and I'm, I think I have like four or five episodes left to go on the second season so I think I'll be sitting down and watching that for the rest of today. So I think that's it. And I hope everybody has time to knit this week. And I will be back next week with uh, my works in progress and maybe a finished object. I don't know. My Nothing's really that close to be finishing. Um, the only thing that might possibly be finished is the baby surprise if I work on that versus the, um, the featherweight cardigan. But I really want to get that featherweight cardigan done. That's... That's a must because that's a knitting for hire that I need to get in the mail. So anyway, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you have any questions, you can reach me on Ravelry in the um, Knitting Blooms podcast group. Or you can um, I am me. I am Blooming Knitter on Ravelry. Or you can uh, plurk me, whatever. Okay. Well, that's all for now. Bye. Okay, so today I'm going to give you a quick demonstration on how I do the interlock um, squares. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go through quickly how I go about um, knitting backwards. And the only thing that I have found is when I'm working my rows, my blocks, so if I'm working the blocks across my work this way I do have to turn my work to pick up my stitches but when I'm working my blocks across this way which is how that I'm working it now I do not have to turn my work to pick up my stitches so I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on how I go about doing interlock um, and knitting my stitches backwards the first stitch on the open um, edge is always slip stitch and the reason for that is is so that it's easy I don't know how well you can see it on the side but you can see the um, kind of it looks like a crochet chain on the side there 
and it's easier to pick up the stitches when you come back to the next row. So slip the first stitch and then knit across when I get to the end of here where I'm going to attach, I'm going to do a slip slip knit and knit two together. And here's where comes in where I start working back the opposite direction, but instead of turning my work and purling the stitches, I'm going to keep my work facing forward and I'm going to do what I call a knit backwards. So I'm going to stick my needle in the back of the, the stitch, wrap the, ne the yarn around the back of the needle, and then um, from the left to right, and then pull it through. And then I'm going to do that again, all the way across. So it's in the back of the, the back of the stitch, wrap the yarn, pull it through. Back of the stitch, pull it through. And it did take me quite a while to get the hang of this. Um, don't think that this all came really naturally to me. It, I've been doing this since I just started this first row of this project. And it has taken me quite a while to get comfortable doing that backwards knit. And I'll show you again. Let me just pull out, sorry about that. I need to pull out some of my yarn here. I I I um, was working this row a little bit ago, and I f realized that I was doing that first stitch wrong, so I had to rip back the whole row. So here we go, back again. So back back of the stitch, wrap the yarn around, and pull it through. And like I said, it, it did take me a while, and um, I I have tried to do this continental as well, but um, continental for me, I can knit continental, but it's not as um, easy for me to knit continental, and it's like I haven't been doing continental as long as I have been throwing my stitches through my yarn, so it's not as easy for me to to do this technique continental which is why I'm only going to show the English version here so again sticking the needle behind wrapping the yarn and pulling it through sticking the needle behind wrap it around and pull it through. Being able to do this with the interlock, it, it makes a huge difference because if you had to turn your work every single time, every single little row of eight stitches, you'd be turning your work quite a bit. And this this way I can actually knit across this entire row all the way across without having to turn my work. Like I said, I when I come back the other way when I'm coming when I'm working from left to right, I do have to turn my work to pick up my stitches, but it's only that first that first row where I'm picking up the stitches. So for instance, here I'm at the end of this square. Now I'm going to pick up my stitches along this edge and again I'll turn this sideways so you can see I'll be picking up in those um, those what look like crochet chain. So I'm picking those, that's where I'm picking up my stitches. And 
this first one. I'm going to slide it over, do a slip slip knit right here, and I'm ready to go forward. And slide it through. And that's all it is to it, is picking up those stitches and then knitting across and then knitting backwards to come back the row. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and if you have any questions please feel free to contact me.